the genesis of God. It's very, very important. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this revelation and thank you for everybody watching right now. I cancel every disease. I cancel every cancer, diabetes, HIV, coronavirus, COVID. I decree and declare right now that these are secure in the name of Jesus. Every ailment from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet, be made thou with horror in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So you got to listen and watch, watch and watch and tell somebody you have actually a button onto there uh, on YouTube or any other. It's just a kind of an arrow. Take it. And you will be sharing it with everybody around the world. There are some messages that after you hear them, you say, the world needed to hear this. Right. All right? And, and go out there and preach this message. All right. So let's open our Bibles in the book of Genesis. And it's easy to open our Bibles in the book of Genesis. Because it is the first book in the book of Genesis. Now, so the book of Genesis says it this way. Are you hearing me? It says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. I don't know whether we have an amplified version of that verse. Let's just put an amplified version quick, very, very fast, uh, so that we, we kind of see, because I don't want to be explaining something that we say, oh, but my, my version of the Bible is saying it this way. Let's get to your version too. <laughs> All right. So um, if, if it's far, then we just continue. So verse number one says it this way. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. To some, some of the things that I'm going to say are going to sound like re repetition, but just stay with me. Yeah, yeah. All right? It's very, very important to stay with me. Do you have it? All right. So, everybody, verse number one in the Amplified Version, hear what it says. In the beginning, mm -hmm. God created by forming nothing the heavens and the earth. And the earth, verse two, the earth was formless and void. Okay. Or a waste now, now imagine it says from nothing, forming from nothing. Uh -huh. All right. Now, science started with this uh, conundrum, so to speak, where they have, they have, or quandary, where they have this problem where they say there was a big bang. And the problem with the Big Bang is, the Big Bang is an explosion, all right? And an explosion has to explode into some space. But for it to explode into some space, there should be a space for it to explode into. No, you, maybe some people are missing me. Because, see, I know what some people want to hear when a preacher stands. You're going to have money. You're going to succeed. Let me tell you something. These are perilous times. We are at the end of the end. All right, Paul to Timo says it this way. We are in the eschatos, the part, the last paragraph, the last sentence of the last chapter. We are about to close the book. The end of the end. Yes. Now, so when we talk about this, the Bible says, be ready to answer anything concerning the hope in you. I repeat. Some people who are, 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 we, are we having people watching right now? Yes, we have people mm -hmm. watching from all over the world on Atomgram. Uh, Abram is watching from South Africa, Limpopo. Richard is watching from Tanzania. Uh, we have people watching even on their way home in the car on Bluetooth. Wow. Michelle is connected as well. Uh, we also have USA, uh, Washington, D.C. is connected. Zimbabwe, India is also here. Quite a number of people. Yeah. Yeah. Now, so, so. So our biggest problem we find, let me just start the whole thing. Bring it up, Genesis 1, verse number 1. Because some people got lost right there. Yes. Genesis 1, verse number 1 says it this way. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now we find that in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And in the amplified version, it says, and God created the heaven and out of nothing. Mm -hmm. All right. The problem we find right there, because some of you are new to our theology and our sagacity and our yeah. sunesis. So, so your problem would be, what do you mean? The point is we have a problem immediately the moment we open Genesis chapter number one. Because it says right there, God created the heaven. Uh -huh. yes. Now, if he created the heaven, he has a problem. Because now we don't know where he stays. Come on. Okay, he didn't get that. If the heavens were created, then God doesn't live in heaven. That's right. Okay. Some people are still flowing Bring it on. very, very slow with me. But 
Imagine somebody just comes and says, yeah, I'm the one who made the house. <laughs> then the person who created the house is not in the house. That's right. He has another house that is not this house. Yeah. All right, they're getting it. Some people are getting it. So, so when we get to the book of Ephesians, chapter number 4, and, and if you read verse number 10, it says, when he went up on high, you know, remember the whole chapter, I want to give you the context. He, he led captivity captive, but he went far above all heavens. Oh, they missed that one round. If he went far above all heavens, that means God doesn't live in heaven. And when he went up on high, he did not go to heaven. He went past the heavens. Now, so, so we have an issue that we understand now that God doesn't stay there. So where does God stay? I don't know if they're getting it. Are they getting it? I'll be more wiser. Wise Vakachegu Vaka is saying it's going to be hot. We are ready to fly and leave the revelation major. Now, so, so we have a problem immediately in scripture. We call that in theology tension in the text. The question here is not, is not uh, where did God stay? The main question is who created God? But before we talk about who created God, let's talk about where he used to stay or where he stays. Now, the moment we see God creating the heaven, he never stayed in heaven. He made it. And the scripture here says, in the beginning. The word in the beginning, it means in time. Beginning is an indication of time. That means there was a time God created time. No, 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 no. Let me reverse this. Let me reverse this. There was a period, a moment where God, there was no time. You see, see, the biggest problem people don't understand is scientists can't tell you what time is. That's, that's right. They can measure the passage of time. Okay. That's right. But they can't measure, they, can't, they don't know what it is. Wow. That's deep. Hey. You can talk to a scientist and a scientist will tell you, I can measure energy. Yeah. But if you ask him what is energy, they will describe, describe some few things. All they are doing is describing it. But they are not telling us what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when scientists begin to pride themselves in understanding knowledge and all the other things that they are saying, they forget Isaac Newton was a scientist. They forget Albert Einstein when he was asked, where did you find the theory of relativity? He said in the book of Genesis. They forget. So they think all scientists don't believe in Christ and they don't believe in God. Erroneous. Come on, come on. Now, so, so we have a big problem immediately when people think we know science, so we know what we're talking about. You don't. Why? Because the moment you say you came from a Big Bang, now you're faced with also another problem. You have to explain where the Big Bang came from. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't say the Big Bang theory came, the Big Bang came from nowhere. No way. And don't allow me to say God came from nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. And, and why not allow me that your Big Bang is actually my God? Yeah. Uh, no, I'm just trying to figure out. So, so then you understand the issue is not that they do not know. The issue is moral decadence that has caused them to deny God. I wish I could talk to you. The Bible says light came into the world, but people love darkness, so they ran away from the light. So scientists are busy trying to discount God and yet allowing a big bang. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. You've got, I, I, don't, I, can't, I can't even measure it. Maybe, maybe it's three pounds of brain matter in your head. <laughs> and you are trying to fit in a God. Let me tell you something. If my God could be explained, and if my God had a beginning, and I could explain him fully, I wouldn't want him to be my God. My three-pound brain being able to explain my God and then I worship him. Ah, oh, no, 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 no. My God should be so big. Now, I'm still answering that question. Now, but who is this God? Where did he come from? You see, the moment you say, where did God come from? You're not talking about my God. No, they didn't get that. 
The Christian God doesn't need to come from somewhere. Yeah. If he, anything comes from somewhere, then it's not God. God. The reason why we call him God is because he didn't come from somewhere. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Otherwise, he's just your brother or your cousin. But the moment he's called God, forget about coming from nowhere. From somewhere. No way. Now, here it is. The moment people say, when was, who created God? They are, they are saying there is a time where something created God. But by saying there is a time where something created God, they are missing the point that that, that something that created God is actually the God we are looking for. No, no, you didn't get it. Yeah. Okay, maybe, maybe some people are really missing this. Uh -huh. Because if God then has to be created by something, we have to ask him, whatever created you is our God. So, so, the question who created God, number one, is missing the God we are talking about. Number two, it has introduced time before time was created. Uh, you, you, you didn't get this. Uh, I can see some people are, are getting lost with this thing. You have already introduced time. When God himself exists in the circumference of himself. Before time he was. Now, right there. For a finite human being. To try and describe an infinite being. Oh. Languze and Kravangus, yes. To try and explain an infinite being. <laughs> and try to really take him and say, now, we want to put him in a test tube. Dissect him and explain him. We have something like that. The Bible calls them gods. Come on. Come on now. Come on. <laughs> Not Jehovah. Now, so many people say, no, but, but you need to understand, uh, time, time has always been there. No, the Bible tells you this way. In the beginning, time, God created the heaven, space, mm. and the earth, matter. Mm. Come on. And by saying that, the Bible is actually telling us something right there. It is called in science continuum. Or rather time-space continuum. What that means when we talk about continuum, we are actually saying time, space, and matter have to occur simultaneously. In fact, at the same time, rather, for anything to exist. You don't have time existing on its own. If time exists on its own, what is it measuring? If matter exists on its own, where would we put matter? It needs to be in space. That's right. And if space exists on its own, what is inside it? That's right. Hey. questions. Come on, bring it on, sir. That's deep. Let's go. If there is no time and there is only space and matter, when will we put time, matter in space? If we have no space, but we only have matter and time. Uh -huh. well, where would we put matter? Mm. I don't know if you're getting this. Yes. So in science, it's called time-space continuum. Yes. Meaning to say, these three have to exist at the same time. And oh. guess what the Bible says? And God in the beginning, time. Uh -huh. yeah. Created the heaven, space. Yes. Yeah. And the earth, matter. Yeah. So he created this simultaneously at the same time. Now, so watch this now. Watch this now. You ought to be a dunderhead to the level of a person who says they poached the egg. And you have to actually earn a lot of money and get money and bribe somebody to bribe you to be stupid. I don't know if you're getting this. For you to see an iPhone, an iPhone, whatever you see here, an iPhone, and then think Steve Jobs is inside. Every time I dial a number, Steve Jobs is also dialing in order to get it through. 
Steve Jobs is dead. That's right. yeah. so, so you cannot expect God to be inside his creation and be bound by the rules of his creation. No, they didn't get that now. They, they missed that. I can see some people getting, they missed that. So, so too many people expect God to be bound by the rules of time. Where does he come from? When did he appear? Who created him? If God needs creation, he's not God. So God, by definition, in the Judeo-Christian values, in the Judeo-Christian definitions, is, is actually the definition of God is this. The uncreated creator of the universe. Yeah. By definition, God defies that question. Now, I don't know if you know this. In Africa, we have some things we eat that are... Our British cousins frown it. It actually takes the scientists to actually tell us that, that it is actually more nutritious than the beef they eat. Some eat insects, some worms, caterpillars. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say. Imagine this is your first time to go to Africa from this country. You arrive in Africa and I'm holding a caterpillar. Number one, you would think I'm crazy. You would even try to explain to me that this is not edible. Why? The countries are different. Rules have become different. So the problem with the normal, normal human being is trying to fit God in their world and say, you are subjected to my rules. Watch this. Since my uncle comes from somewhere, you should also come from somewhere. Since I have a mother, you also have to have a mother. And I don't want to be complicated this week. But I just want to kind of carry you along so you can actually see something. So the Bible says, a fool said in his heart, there is no God. A fool said in his heart, there is no God. See, some trying to be wise, they became foolish. That's the scriptures. Some claiming to be wise, they became foolish. And the Bible says the weakness of God is stronger than men. And you can infer the stupidity of God is wiser than men. When God has become the worst dunderhead on earth, he's still wiser than the wisest person. When God says, I can't even lift my own nails, he's still stronger than you. So here it is. Our biggest problem is not to see something here. The Bible says, and God created the heaven and the earth. When he created it, Ephesians comes and says, no, he went far above the heaven. He doesn't live in heaven. Where does he live? What else to go to? The book of Timoth. The book of Timoth. First Timoth, chapter number six. And I want you to start from verse number 15 so you can understand. We're about to get to some incredible areas. Trust me on this. Are you here somewhere? Yes, sir. On YouTube, Solomon is saying, I wondered what will come after seeing the topic, but now I have gained a new revelation. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. First Timothy 6, 16. Okay. First Timothy 6. 16. Mm -hmm. Start from 15. 15. Let's quickly do this. Okay. Which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and only potentate, the king of kings and mm -hmm. lord of lords. The lord of lords. Uh huh. Who only has immortality. Who only has immortality. Dwelling in. Watch this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dwelling in the light. Where does he live? Oh, you're not hearing me here. Oh. 
dwelling in a light where no man can approach. Not in heaven. He dwells in light. He himself is light. He lives in the circumference of himself. That's my God. He dwells in light. Yes. No man can approach. Oh, you say, but men of God. Wow. What, about, what about Moses? Moses never saw God. Oh. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I know. I know right come there. Come on, come on, man. I know yeah. right there. You say, but, 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 but what about the burning bush? He saw, even God said, remove your, your, your shoes, shoes. For where you are is holy. You forgot something. A greater man called Moses, Paul. With a greater revelation than Moses. Oh my God, you didn't hear me. Come on. Why, why am I saying it's good? The Bible says it this way. That even John the Baptist oh, mm -hmm. is greater than all the prophets. Yes. And anyone who is least in the kingdom is yes. greater than John who is greater than Moses. Yes. Break it down. Now you have Paul, the apostle. Yes. And if you notice, the Bible says the prophets desired to look into these things. They inquired of the blessing. They inquired. That means all prophets in the Old Testament were inquirers. Ah. Right, right. They inquired to try and see what is in us. Oh, brother. Oh, Zaliga and Kravios. What is in you? Moses tried to look into Moses. And God said, no. Elijah the Great, the man would prophesy and say, I prophesy in the presence of God. He was not told. What about Abraham? Look at the look at the hall of faith where it says, and Abraham did this, and Sarah did this. But these, yeah, it's only one scripture. But these died without holding the promise. Oh. You say you are you are like a, you are Abraham, you. The Bible says he died without obtaining the promise. They didn't have what we have. Oh, I, I need to go now, huh? I don't, I don't think you are getting me at all. So, so now watch this. Are you hearing this? So the word that appears there is the word panim. The word panim is first. You know, when people say, but, but Moses, but look at Moses. He even, he even got to a point when we got told uh, Aaron and, and Miriam that as for Moses, I speak to him face to face. Mm -hmm. The word that appears is the word panim. Mm -hmm. Panim means before. Uh -huh. They didn't get this. They didn't get this. Let's go Exodus 10, 11. Exodus 10, 11. I, wanna, I want you to, to relax, relax. I know what you're thinking, but, but what, about the, what about the burning bush? I will deal with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not so. Mm -hmm. Go now ye that are men and mm -hmm. serve the Lord, for that ye did desire. And they were driven out from Pharaoh's presence. Pharaoh's presence. Mm -hmm. The word presence is panim. Oh. That's the word face to face. Face to face. Okay, okay, okay. You will only see my what? My back. Mm. Yet God had said, I speak to him face to face. Wow. Right. And he said, put your face in the cleft of the rock and I'll touch your face. Hey. And he left there saying, I've seen the Lord. Hey. God said, I will show you my back. You only did not see. Hey. <laughs> what about the burning bush where he says, remove your shoes for the place you are in is holy. And Moses saw God in a burning bush. Right. The bush wasn't burning, but there was fire inside. Yeah. Right. But Paul comes in with revelation uh -huh. and says, when Moses saw an angel burning in the bush, oh, oh. 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 oh, you didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. Moses never saw God. Wow. It never happened. Hot, hot. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, yeah. Angel, I know you did. Are you still flowing? Are you still flowing? Because I, I can see some people like, no. Break but, it but, down, but, major. But, but, but then God, but then, listen, never happened. Now, so the word first there is the word panim. It simply means before, your presence. Mm -hmm. Notice the presence of God is not the person of God. Mm. Jesus says, no man has gone there except the son of man which is in heaven. No, see, 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 see. Listen, he says, no one is ascended up to heaven except the Son of Man. Hey, Jesus said, nobody's gone there. What about the guys that went there? They never went. They were right in paradise. That's why when Jesus died, he went there and led captivity captive. 
He took them from the region of hell called paradise. A higher region of hell. They were not burning, no. They were in a location. That's why when you get to the book of Revelation and you start reading, you realize that hell itself will be expanded. But what is it expanded with? That same region called paradise becomes the expansion. We're going to deal with it in, a, in all this series. So we have so many people that think Moses saw God. Where? What about Jacob? He fought God. He said, I have fought God and I survived. But what's this? The Bible says, and when he slept, you see that scripture? You can read that and commit rap case on a scripture. Force it to mean what you want. The man said, I fought God and I lived. But just rewind a little bit. You are allowed. And you are allowed to think a little bit. It's still legal. They are working on it being illegal though. So you need to be really quick about it. So going back a little bit, going back a little bit, look at what it says. It says, and Jacob fought an angel. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Specifically gives you that this was an angel. But since the angel carried the panim, the presence of God. So when he fought the angel, he said, I fought God. So now God knowing that he exists in a light no man can approach. Hey! I wish, I wish. Uh, uh, I don't know if there are people getting me or... I don't know if you are getting this. This is Apo Crypto. An excellent route is saying greater than those of the old are here we are. Amen, amen. <laughs> Kalimandosia. So, so God knows I exist in a light that no man can approach. Yeah. And now I have a problem because I want to create somebody called a man who should approach me. What do I do? Whoa. Come on. Now, now, Philippians 2, 7. If you can, I uh, think it's English Revised or English Standard Version. English Standard Version. Let me just... Uh, and go to 6 first. Philippians 2, 6. Ah. Philippians 2, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Who thought he was... Mm -hmm. who, um, in, I'll start from 5. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. Who thought he was in the form of God. Mm -hmm. Did not discount... Who not, though? Uh -huh. yeah, Let's go. Who though he thought he was in the... He was in the form of God. Mm -hmm. Did not count equality with God at things Something to be grasped. Uh -huh. Let's go. Seven. But I want you to himself. notice seven. Uh -huh. What does he say? But emptied himself. But what? Emptied, emptied himself. himself. But what? Emptied himself. Emptied himself. Now, go to King James. Now, you see, they didn't get that. They didn't get that. I know you're just missing that a little bit. It's bigger than what you're seeing. I wish you can be just a little bit quick. Yes, sir. <laughs> Philippians mm -hmm. 2 verse 6. Mm -hmm. Who being in the form of God. Who being in the form of God. You see that? He was in the form of God. Yes. Uh-huh. Thought it not robbery. He did not think it was robbery. It was not a lie to him to be equal with God. It never occurred to him that he was lying. And he wasn't. Let's go. I want you to see seven. That's why you're missing it. I know you just didn't catch it. Seven. Seven. But made himself of no reputation. Made himself of no reputation. The English Standard Version says it. He emptied himself. Now imagine God is in the circumference of himself before time. And he realizes. Now let me just say this. Do you know if God himself. Oh. I wish. I could see all your faces and just try to put this in you. Okay. Now, imagine he's sitting right there. Okay. Where? In the circumference of himself. Yes. Because God can't fit in any place. Yes. Uh, oh, my God. No, okay. All right. All right. I know, I know you missed that. Keep, keep holding there. I don't know if you understand. Come on, come on. Haliga A kiromande ge prena alabando skia. Ah, yes, 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 yes. The revelation I get from you, Dad, I can never get it anywhere else. Amen. Can I you go to, you. Um, thank you so much, First Kings 8.27. First Kings 8.27. 
I just need a little bit of speed so that when the Holy Ghost is giving me something, I get. I don't bring here yeah. knots or anything. Go, 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 make So I get it and immediately. Yes. All right. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Will God dwell on the earth? So it's okay. Let's say he's not in heaven. Can he fit on earth? Let's go. Behold, the heaven and heaven of heavens mm. cannot contain thee. The heavens of, of heaven. heavens cannot of contain heaven. thee. <laughs> heaven and heaven of heavens. He is bigger than the heaven you think he stays in. I know some people. If you if you turn again and you go to uh, Second Chronicles six eighteen, Second Chronicles six eighteen. <laughs> Listen, God can't stay in heaven. It's too small. Yes, yes, yes. But will God in very deed dwell with men on earth? Behold, heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain thee. How much less this house which I have built? Say, I build you a temple, but I know <laughs> it's too small. Same. Notice, notice God could not fit in one Christian. Oh, they didn't hear that. All right, I just said something. I said God can't fit in one Christian. That's why the whole Christianity is called the body of Christ. The body. I don't know if you're getting this. Oh, ya liga vanta and So the Bible says in Philippians, he emptied himself. Adam is not there yet. Yay! Because Christ was crucified before the foundation of the world. So Christ, Christ hasn't come to earth. The world hasn't been created. God hasn't said, let there be. Before he said in the beginning, time. Before that, God was with himself. Now, your biggest problem then is, if he was staying with himself for trillions of years, billions and quadrillions of years, what was he doing? Your problem still persists. You're still talking of time. Yeah. <laughs> Eternity is less than a second. Ooh. They didn't get that now. All right. I just messed up some few things, right? Because your mindset is one year, two years, God is just on his own. What is he doing? Oh, my God, things are very bad for God. He's on his own because you, you are with your friends every time, two hours on the phone. So you are thinking God should be talking to somebody. <laughs> I like Brother Kenneth Hagen. He said one time, you know, when he learned how to confess, and he would just confess, I'm a gentleman, I'm big, I'm this. Then one day as a young guy, he sees this guy who is just talking to himself every day, his neighbor, just talks to himself every time. He said, this guy is mentally disturbed. <laughs> so he decided, let me go and ask, say, why are you talking to yourself? Every day I see you, you are talking to yourself. He said, no, at least I'm talking to a gentleman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you understand. He said, at least I'm talking to a gentleman, you know. Not fools around and talking to them. No, I'm talking to a gentleman when I talk to myself. And the Bible says it this way. It says, singing hymns to yourselves. Do you know what that scripture means? I know you don't know. He hmm. didn't sing, say singing hymns to God. To yourself. No, no, no. no. Hymns to praise you. Oh, no, no, he didn't get that. <laughs> he didn't say singing hymns to God. That's the book of Jude. He says singing hymns to yourself. Speaking to yourself. Singing hymns to yourself. How great thou art. <laughs> Why? I have Christ in me. Ay, ay, ay. Christ in me. The hope of glory. Ay, ay. Says Christ in me. Christ, Christ, Christ in me. I am big. You can do nothing to me. Then imagine me singing that in a song. Singing to myself. <laughs> That's what the Bible talks about. When you are filled with the Holy Ghost, you act drunk because you'll be drunk. Be ye being filled with the Holy Ghost. When Paul writes that, he's actually doing a Greek play of words. He's not saying be filled with the Holy Ghost. No, you're already with the Holy Ghost. He says be ye being filled. Continuously getting drunk. Oh, yeah. You are full with the Holy Ghost. You add another cup. Hey, you add another one. 
When you when you see when you see you are moving like this and you are drunkard like this and you feel like ah, I think I'm now about to move straight. Take another one. Never be sober in the Holy Ghost. Never be sober in the Holy Ghost. It's the only addiction with no hangover. And when you're about to have it, take another sip. Be being drunk in the Holy Ghost. Why? Because this thing we believe, brothers and sisters, needs some kind of craziness. Some kind of ayah. Sit down. Now, wherever you are, wherever you are right there, just understand something. The Bible says, and he is alone. I wish. And, and he decided to empty himself. You, you understand when God is sitting here like this and he picks himself up. And this is God holding God. And God pulls himself out. Empts himself. He emptied himself. Imagine you yourself picking yourself up. And then shaking yourself. Yeah. Mm. And Christ comes out. Oh, oh, did it, did it. Ah, yeah, yeah. Now, now, this is why the Bible says, The Lord say to my Lord, The Lord say to my Adonai, say to Adonai. And there's only one Adonai. Jehovah say to Jehovah. Elohim say to Elohim. In other words, he's sitting like this. Then he steps out of himself. And he turns around and talks to himself. Hey. Hey. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The triune God. Now, now. Unity, diversity, and communication in the community of the Godhead. So the Godhead became a community. They didn't get this now. I'm about to say something that will maybe get you closer or even drive you even further from what I'm trying to get you because if you, if you kind of listen to it with a certain kind of mindset, you get messed up. Uh, I wish I could talk to you about this. John 1 verse number 1. I'm about to go there. John 1 verse number 1. John 1 verse number 1. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. What was in the beginning? It was the word. So the book of John chapter number one, verse number one, is actually the beginning of the Bible. Yeah. Oh, come on. Because in Genesis it says in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. It's talking about a material world created by a God we, we don't know where he came from. Wow. Now John says, I know because I've been close to Jesus more than all of you. When Jesus was about to be taken uh, to be crucified, the Bible says, and John laid his head on the chest of Jesus. You see, the guy was so close that Peter the Pope, when Jesus said, one of you is going gonna, is gonna to betray me, Peter beckoned to John to ask Jesus who it was. Uh, that's when you know who is the friend. Peter said, John, ask because <laughs> I know if I ask I'm not going to be told but I know you will be told so ask the guy <laughs> now nah, you're not hearing this you're not hearing this he said ask him what's going to happen what's going to happen in fact Jesus made a statement he was talking about him dying and that some will not see death and blah blah and he's talking about all these things and Peter got, got confused. He says, Master, what are you going to do about that guy? Mm. Peter, the Pope, is pointing at John. That's right. He knows that one is too close to the Master. Yeah. He says, what are you going to do? What about this man? <laughs> Jesus turned around to the Pope. The one he said, feed my sheep. Mm. Assign the whole church to, Paul, to Peter. Mm. But Peter knows, I've been given the church, but but what about the heart of the master? <laughs> he knew the heart of the master is with John. Yeah. He said, uh, uh, say, um, what about that guy? 
<laughs> I know my assignment, but what are you going to do with him? Jesus turned to Peter and said, what is it to you? He didn't end there. He said, if I want him to live till I come back. Hey! So it's possible to live and never die. Oh, oh, oh. He didn't hear me. He said, if I want, I can make it happen. Brothers and sisters, in this world is who you know. I know Jesus. Now, so, so you, have a, you have a problem here where the guy is so confused. Like, what are you going to do with this guy? He said, hey, if I want him to live till I come, what is it to you? This is the guy we find writing in the book of John. And when he starts writing, guess what he says? He says, yet the master. Since people then begin to speak that this same disciple who writes these things, <laughs> John, <laughs> says, I am he, the one that was loved. Him, he's writing. He said, then people from then on began to say, John will never die. Yet the master said, what is it to you if I wanted to? He writes it. This is the man. He's the only one who ignored the mortal power and the mortal uh, uh, structure of the bones and the flesh of Jesus, he ignored it and went straight to heaven. Some will say, Jesus, son of this, son of this, son of this. When he came to John, he said, I know who he is. I will not talk about Mary for now. Let's talk about where he came from. He was in the beginning God. Hey! He was in the beginning God. In the beginning was the word. He, that's how he starts. Was the logos. The whole Bible is the Logos. It's not Rema. When scriptures begin to jump off the pages, they become Rema. But this what you're looking for is Logos. And when you get to the book of Psalm 138, it tells you he exalted his name above all names. But his word above his own name. The word that is, a, the name that is above every name. That at every knee, Philippians 2, every knee should bow of things in heaven, of things under the earth, of things in the earth. All names bow. But when it comes to Saul, he says, he exalted his name above his name. All names. And his word above his own name. Why? Because he is the word. Now, John says, in the beginning, What's the word? Oh, read it. Read it. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Revelation 19, 13. Palegunzina. Revelation 19, 13. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, mm -hmm. and his name is called the word of God. Jesus is the word of God. Amen. That's what Revelation tells you. Now you say, have you answered who created God? I'm going there. <laughs> hey, let's go, man. Let's go, man. So, so now we see something here where we get God in one location. Are you? Yeah. That's Revelation 19, verse number 13. Yes, sir. He is the word. Mm -hmm. Now, John says, in the beginning was, was the, word. the word. So he's saying in the beginning was, was Jesus. Jesus, yes. yes and yes. Jesus was with God, God. the Father. Uh -huh. And Jesus, Jesus was, was God the, the Father. Father. All things were made by him. And without him was nothing made which was made. So when we see the Bible says, and God said, let there be. We know it's actually saying, and Jesus said, let there be. Because John said, he is the one who created everything. The word created. I know you're, not, you're missing something here. But why is it that it is the word that starts? I want you to go to Hebrews 1. Three, this is the scripture, mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen. I'm about to finish. Oh, no. Two more minutes. Who being the Nowadays, brightness? I've been, I've been praying <laughs> that I do my service one hour only. No. I've been praying. <laughs> I'm telling you. I think I started. I think I started past one a little bit after the music and all that. Yeah. So let's hear. Who being the brightness of his glory? Who being the brightness of his glory? And the express image of his person. Now I want you to see something here. Now, the brightness of his glory, okay? The reflected brightness of his glory. I don't know if you're getting this. 
Now, I have a problem with the word, which is the word image. It is the word kar akte. Now, that means the form. Hmm. Okay. Now, if you were to see this form, um, a form would look somewhat like this thing where we pour all the instruments, all the metal we want to pour into, and then so that we can create the thing, you see? So we remove it in order for this to be exposed. You know, if you are a builder, you would understand what a, uh, a mold is. Yes, that's right. So the word kar akte is actually a word that means a, a mold. <sighs> nah, I know you missed this now. I want to ask the question, what makes the brick? Does the brick make the mold or the mold makes the brick? Oh, you didn't get that now. Did you even get what I just said? I feel like, you know, I feel like I'm just, I'm on my own here. If the Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God, now we have a problem. He says he is the express image, the character. He is the mold. The one that makes the brick. So if you want to ask me who created God, it is Jesus. You didn't hear that. No. You didn't hear that. No. Let me explain. Because the Bible says he is the character of what? Of God. When you say the express image, you're thinking it's just a stamp. That's one of the meanings, a stamp. When you, and a stamp comes out. The one with the authority. It's not the one that, it is what it prints. Now, the other one is the word form or the word, the word mold. The one that makes the thing. So, it says he is the express maker. Oh. If you have a coin, right? You see a drawing on it. An image. That image came from a form. A mold. The coin and the mold. The word character is not the coin. It is this mold. Did I just go deeper on some people? Yeah. Now, so the Bible says, in the beginning was the word. There was Jesus before anything called God. God can be God until somebody worships him. Oh, you didn't, you didn't, miss, you missed that part. I repeat, God cannot be God until something worships him. This is what the Bible says, if you give more time to your wife, to your car, to your house, your children, you're not worth to be in heaven. You're not worth for the kingdom of heaven. In other words, whatever you devote yourself to becomes your God. But imagine the word is alone. And nobody is worshipping the word. How then can the word become God when there's nothing to worship it? So Jesus then... Hmm, spoke and created the angels and immediately he created the angels the angels knelt down bowed and looked at him and worshipped him and he became God so in the beginning was the word but the word had nobody to worship until the word created and when the word created it qualified to be God because now it's worshipped that's why the scripture is there in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. In other words, inside the word, there was a God ability. Oh, wow. yeah. But the God abilities could not come out until something worshipped him. Imagine knowing you are a millionaire inside you, but there's no money to prove it. Oh. <laughs> come on. Yeah. Then you decide, let me create money. And I create my own world. We have my money. And this is the money I use here. Boom, boom, boom. 20 million. And guess what? Everyone who sees me, I'm like, oh, what are you? I'm a millionaire. I can prove it. 
So in the beginning was the word. Jesus was alone in the circumference of himself. As the word. Hmm. Uh, oh my God. I wish. Let me, let, me, let me get if people are getting it. People are getting it. Because we want to go deeper a little bit. We want to go mm. deeper a little bit. We are, we are, we are going deeper yes, a little people bit. People are catching it. Kira, Kyra mm -hmm. is saying God can't be God until something worships him. I'm following. Yes, My yes. Excellent Ruth is saying a king is not a king without a kingdom. It is the kingdom that defines a king. Exactly. Yeah. Queen can say I'm the queen <laughs> of where? <laughs> of what? <laughs> Who crowned you? <laughs> no. Now, so, 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 the biggest problem that's taking place right now is when people think the earth uh, was filled, if you would ask me, 6,000 years ago. And they think then there was a pre-Adamic world. Then they think angels. Then they think, okay, wait a minute. But let's say it happened 25,000 years ago. Okay, let me sh it's just an example. If it happened 20,000 uh, years ago, 25,000 years ago, so okay, here, 25,000, we are here now. This is when it happened. How many years had God stayed without thinking to create? But the question then introduces time. Okay, okay. So because the average person thinks time is measured in seconds. If, if time, right now for you to think time is not there. It's simply the passage of time. For you to think it, do you know there is a problem? Do you know if I travel at the speed of light towards Mars, I arrive yesterday? <laughs> at the speed of light, going in fact, faster than the speed of light, I arrive yesterday. Come on. And if I go the opposite direction away from the earth, guess what? I arrive next day, next year. And when I arrive there, if I'm given goggles to look on earth, I can actually see you in yesterday. Yeah, let me just explain. This, this is science I'm just dealing with. When Albert Einstein was leaving from his workplace on a train, he looked back and saw time. And to him, it seemed as if the time had slowed down. Maybe they didn't get that. They've already measured it. They used a plane. And same thing on earth, they put the same clock and they flew that plane as fast as they could. And guess what? The time here was different. This one, that one lost seconds. This one did not. They didn't get that. I'm just, I don't want to get into science as if I'm trying to say science justifies the Bible. But I want you to understand that the speed that you are in reduces time or increases it. It's the passage of time you are working with. Oh. Oh. All this theory of relativity. Now, imagine I'm in, in this fast thing. And the seconds are lower. And the hours become less. That means when I arrive to that place, I've arrived yesterday on Saturday. And when you give me a, a way to look to earth, towards earth, I can actually see yesterday. You celebrating prophet's birthday, everyone dancing there. The thing I already saw. So when, I want to see, tell you something now. So to God, time, this is the trinity of trinities. I don't want to deal with the trinity of trinities. Time, space, continuum, that's three. But it's always a trinity and trinity. Uh, past Present, future, mm, uh, width, length, height. You get the point. You get the point now. You get the point. If you go there, you get to Gassin. You, you, you see, you have Trinity of Trinities. I don't want to go to that. Now, we'll deal with it another time. But now we have a problem here that people think they know time. So anytime you cut time and say this is the beginning of time, they say, okay, but still, even if there is no watch, they think that's time we watch. Watch is there to measure time, right. but it's not time. That's right. 
so when people say, what time is it? They don't know they're actually looking at a measurement of time, not time. Come on. Come on. Oh, my God. Let's go. You see, the difference with Christianity and science, and remember, I'm going to use religion kind of as um, just a way of saying religion. The difference between science and religion, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, I'm talking about bad science here, is that or evolutionists and scientists and, and Christians is this. At least in Christianity, we tell you it's a religion. But evolutionists want to say it's a science. And then they charge you money to pay for their faith. You didn't get that. At least we admit this is a spiritual journey. I don't want to call it religion, but I have to call it for the purpose of this broadcast. Yeah, right. yeah. Most Christians admit we are in a religion. Evolutionists want to put it in a science. Imagine, do you know that there is no born on earth, no fossil born that proves evolution? Okay, I'll, 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 let me show you something. Here you are. You have seen a job born of a dinosaur. Now, immediately say, see this job one, see this job one, it's the great grandfather of beds. Where do you? <laughs> did it tell you? Did it call you? How did you know? Uh, because there is a fossil record. There is no fossil record anywhere on earth. Don't be lied to. They have pieces and pieces of bones. And then they are, with their inference, they've told you they are just, just, just um, 90, I think it was 95, where I think Creation Magazine, uh, no, not Creation Magazine, uh, uh, Science Magazine, American Science Magazine, I'm called American Scientist or something. They put something that they said it was a missing link. Mm -hmm. Missing link. The thing that was, the, the thing they waited to find for years trying to figure out how do we, we just jump. Because they were admitting now that they, they, they didn't really want to admit. They were saying we, this one is the great grandfather of this one, the ancestor of this one. And, and putting bones together until they said we found a missing link. Dinosaurs, right, still exist. They are now beds. And this Chinese guy, you know Chinese people, yeah, and this Chinese guy, now they found another virus now. Now, you know this, <laughs> the Chinese guy, yeah. what he did, he took photos of fossil records, where there were this, there was this small thing that was flying as a dinosaur, but you know there are some that they just draw, but this one, he said they, have, they have found them now, right. in, with wings, everything. Okay. Only a few years later, he said, I'm sorry, it's a lie. Science had already put it out there. Do you understand that in Africa we have what we call South African science, Zim science, all these magazines, huh? Yeah, right. And you see this chicken with, uh, with um, uh, those human beings with a, with, a, with a tail thing. Yeah, yeah. It's called educational murder to this day. Do you know why? Because the person who did it took embryos of a chicken, a chick. Those are the things we are studying in Africa to this day. And put them and recorded them and took photos. And said, this is what a human being would look like. Started like this. Mm. Only a few, in fact, it wasn't even years. Months later, people realized he lied. He confessed, but to this day, we still have it in the books. Oh. We are paying thousands for their religion. Come on. It's a religion. Evolution is a religion. It's a faith. In fact, it takes more faith. In fact, if you get to science, it takes more faith to believe in a big bang than to believe in Jesus. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Imagine the science is there was a big bang from nowhere mm -hmm. and it exploded into nothing. <laughs> and all of a sudden, created intelligent things. In order. Now, we can't even move the earth closer. If we move the, the earth closer to the sun by an inch, we burn to death. Away, we freeze to death. It's positioned exactly where it needs to be positioned. And the Bible says, I put the earth there and told it with my words to stay there. Now, ah, now we know there is an intelligent designer. 
you know, this book here is not a result of an explosion in a printing press. <laughs> A page, chapter, everything, Philippians. Ah, I can read it. Wow, wow, wow. Whenever I can derive meaning from something, it means there is a meaning writer. That's right. Now, so God emptied himself. He was alone in the circumference of himself. Yeah. <sighs> Says, great is the mystery of godliness that God became flesh. Mystery of godliness. God was in the circumference of himself. He began to speak to himself. I don't know if you're hearing this. God spoke to himself. But how did he start? The word start. I keep repeating this so you can get it. The word start simply means the beginning of time. Yet God has already told you, I'm the one who started time. That's why I said in the beginning, I did this. The beginning means time. When I introduced Time, this is what I did. But before time, I wasn't even here in the sense of inside time. I was outside of that time. Now, you are trying to put me in time and try to find me when the Bible says I'm the ancient of days. When days look at me, they say you are older than us. Time looks at him and says you are older than us. It's so amazing. How we want to fit in God in time. We want to fit God inside time. You, won't even, you can't even fit one square meter on earth. I can't even fit in a one square meter. I'm too small for one square meter. And I'm trying to explain. A limitless God. Boundful. Something that an entity that calls himself the ancient of days. Wow. The I am that I am. See, he doesn't even want to explain himself. Yeah. Moses said, oh, how can I explain them? What would I say? Who sent me? Say, I am that I am. <laughs> if you look at it in the Hebrew, it doesn't have M-M there. Because the Hebrew doesn't have A-M-A-M. So he says, I-I. 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 Moses is like, why am, what am I going to say? He said, tell them the I, I said it. The man he speaks to face to face, Panim, he's thinking, I can ask this man and he would tell me. He said, I am what I am. Go ahead and tell them. <laughs> what is he going to say? Yeah, I am I. <laughs> huh? He said even by my name, they did not know me. Yeah. He said, okay, so now I'm telling you my name. What does it say? I. I. Huh? <laughs> he is not bound by your thinking. Science can't explain him. Geologists can't touch him. Mm. Scientists can't even understand him. Come on. That's why he said, you need to be spiritual for you to understand what it is. I remember having a vision like two, three minutes in the vision. And when I came out, I wrote a book. They didn't get it. I'm not stretching it. It's not like I was stretching the story that I had in three minutes. Three minutes that I slept and woke up. Oh, I'm up. Those three minutes, watch this now. Those three minutes, I had gotten volumes and volumes and volumes inside the three minutes. It is the old question. How many angels can stand on the tip of a ballpoint? Billions. Is it because they are small? No. The spiritual realm is not measured by time. Oh. It is measured by spirit. Wow. Wow. So we have a lot of people who are in a secular humanism. They get into church and they are trying to get the world into the church. Then they are trying to get God to fit their daily lives. Since I can cook and meal comes out, God ought to come from somewhere and be here. The God we serve, brothers, is too big to be placed in time he created. I told you before, Steve Jobs is not in your iPhone. The computer you use at home right now that you're watching me from, uh, on, let me tell you something. Somebody is not, the owner, the, the one who created it is not inside. So you create, you, you press one, you say, guys, one has been pressed, please press one. No. If the creator of the computer is not in the computer, why is it that you want to fit my God inside the earth? Hey. Hey. 
Now, the problem that science is doing is this. When we ask them, where is the creator of the Big Bang theory? The Big Bang. They say, uh, no, there's no, 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 nobody. Nobody. It's the Big Bang is inside itself. It created and then it became itself. It is it's still the Big Bang. And, huh? So my God now, I can't explain the same way. I can't say God was in himself and he created himself and inside him he came out. But your Big Bang should be like that. Yeah. So you see, scientists and religion still have the same problem when it comes to the origin. They can't explain where the Big Bang came from. They say from nothing. And when we say our God came from nothing, they say, tell us who created him. If this thing came from nothing, yeah. our creator also came from nothing. nothing. Yeah. Why should we accept that? Because you think science, we are learned. So I say, oh, yeah. You see, science is, you can measure it. Not all your faith. Faith, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Yeah. Our faith is based on knowledge. With no information, you can't have faith. The Bible says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by hearing information. It's not blind. Come on. It's based on knowledge. Come on. Now, I want to see some few people. Let me hear what they're saying so that we can move. Excellent, Rachel. You should be saying Big Bang is simply saying when a car accident occurs, we got a whole car and not a shattered one. Chaos creating order. Not possible. It's a lie. It's a big lie. <laughs> We've got Prisca from Kenya who's saying this revelation is so heavy. I'm just standing up. And I haven't started. You understand? <laughs> because we still have... We we'll see a part two of this. But I wanted to kind of deal with the issue of time here so that you understand the God you serve is not limited. Amen. If he was limited by time, then you are in deep trouble. Wow. He is not limited. And if you can explain him in your brain, it's less than two kgs, your brain. Hey, come on. Right. And it's obese. It's fat. <laughs> People don't know that the brain is more fat than anything. It's a blob of fat in there. <laughs> <laughs> and you are in there. It is the most, listen, it is the most spoiled part of your body. Oh. Each size and the blood that goes there. Yeah. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's about one and a half kilos. But it receives blood, share of blood more than anywhere. Yeah. It is special treatment. <laughs> But the reality is, it's still too minute to explain a God who created it. Hallelujah. Maybe you didn't get yeah. that. Let me hear your questions. Let me hear. Oh, uh, Ahmad Walebo on YouTube be saying, if Jesus created God, why do we have to pray to the Father in the name of Jesus? No, people missing it. <laughs> the Father is God the Father. Mm -hmm. God the Father is the one we worship. Who is God the Father? Jesus. They didn't get it. See, people, let me tell you something for you to understand how we break down scripture. Remove everything you know and say, I'm hearing it for the first time. Yeah. So when, right now, I've just seen where you missed it. You thought I'm saying God, Jesus created God. I explained the technicalities of yeah. God. Yeah. Big difference. It's the same as there is two. Then I say, okay, now two came out of one plus half plus half. Then where you got stuck in the equation and forgot the answer. In the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God, and the same Jesus we are calling you that was God, was God. Come on. So we're talking about the same thing. Right. We didn't separate them. I just gave you the technicalities of it, so you kind of understand that this is the same God. Okay, if you want to go further in that direction, let me give you this. Timo, um, um, Paul, uh, Philip said, show us God the Father, the one you want to... He went to Jesus and said, show us the Father. Jesus, please show us who the Father is and it will be we will be satisfied. What is the name of the sister or brother? Who asked the question? The one who asked the question. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Oh, the question on YouTube. Oh, um, Aman, Aman Dualebo. Okay, Amanda, I don't know. It's the sister Aman. or brother. Um, I think it's a brother. brother. Okay, brother, yeah. sister. <laughs> that question is the same thing as, why do we pray to the Father? And I've just told you, he emptied himself, shook himself of something. 
now and took on the form of a servant so he can look like you and me. That's why he could pray. Pray to where? He emptied himself. Yeah. Did, did they get it? Okay. Here, let me repeat this because you might actually miss it. Here is God. All right, Jesus wants to come to earth. Then he empties himself. All right? Do you still see that there are two? There is still Jesus and there is still this thing he emptied himself. Mm -hmm. Now the Bible says he emptied himself. That thing he emptied so he can be like human like you. If he emptied this in order to become like you, that means there is still this which is divine. You didn't get it. Yes. Now, so people say, oh, okay, so where, does, where is Jesus praying to? He emptied himself. Of what? Ask yourself, what is the mathematics? Why did you empty yourself and... Of what? In order to die, he needed to empty of something. Because God doesn't die. Yeah, that's right. Come on, come on. Do you understand if the Holy Ghost was not there, Jesus would still be dead in the grave? If the spirit of him, huh, that raised Christ from the dead, dwells on the inside of you, the spirit of him, the Holy Ghost, entered the bones of Jesus. He resurrected from the grave. Hey. Uh, I know you will not get this. But, but then Philip said, show us God the Father and it will satisfy us. And Jesus said, have I been so long with you, Philip, and yet you don't know me, not the Father. Me. What he was saying? He was saying, I am the Father. Say so then, why sayest thou? Why ask you thou, show me the Father? When you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Oh, my God. And that's exactly what every Christian ought to do. When they say, where is this Jesus? You say, if you, you, do you understand Ephesians 5.30? Yeah. We are his bones. Hey. 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 Says we are his bones. Yes, when you see you an angel moving, he's the bones of Jesus. Yes. The flesh of Jesus. Yes. The body parts of Jesus. Yes. So if you ask me where is Christ, I say, if you have seen me. Yes. You have seen Jesus. God borrowed a body from the woman called Mary. Yeah. Borrowed a body and entered in there. Come on, come on. Wow. <laughs> the presence of God and his person are two different things. See, I told you, when you want to deal with time and we're going to deal with it another time in a deeper way uh, so that you, I don't know, maybe it's still kind of mistaken on that. So, I if somebody is like that is giving that question, that means some people are missing me. If Jesus emptied himself and took on the form of a servant, and in the beginning was the word, and we just read that the word from Revelation 19, 13 was Jesus. The word. So the word is Jesus, and Jesus mm -hmm. is the word. Mm -hmm. So John 1 verse number 1, in the beginning was the word. I want you to change if you are here, yeah. and if you are at home, just put where you say, uh, word, put Jesus. Mm -hmm. God, put God the Father. Mm -hmm. In all that verse, just put it like that. And I want you to read it with those that you have substituted with. Because now you know the word is Jesus. Now you know God is the Father. Yeah. So in the beginning what? was Jesus, Jesus. and yeah. Jesus... Yeah was with the Father, and Jesus was the Father. Now you start asking, why are we praying to the Father? He's the same guy. Prophet, the Thank explanation you. is very simple. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But now, now, we want to go to... to uh, Colossians 2, and I don't want to get to the God yet issue because that's another subject. Um, Colossians 2, verse number 8, it says, Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy, vain deceit, and tradition of men, and the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Notice number one. Don't be fooled. Beware. Be aware. Something is coming. Danger, 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 danger. Look out. Somebody's about to lie to you. Where? Using vain deceit. The word vain deceit means you have fools fooling you. 
You know when you are deceived in a certain foolish way, <laughs> that everyone comes to you and says, ah, but you, yeah, honestly, <laughs> how would you give this guy, you know, have you ever seen people who say, send me 2,000, and then uh, when you send 2,000, I'm going to send you 50,000. Hey. Hey. Oh, you say, oh, okay, I'm going to do that. I'm going to make money. Oh, you, you will see. Wake up! Is this your angle? Why do, I need, why do I need to give you money? The Bible says, he that gives money to the poor shall be poor. He that gives money to the rich, sorry, shall be poor. Imagine, there are some people there. We have more money than you. You are giving money to 2,000. You now give this one. Who is saying, I'll give you 40? How many people is he sending that text message to? Thousands. He now has millions now. And you're giving him money for, in order for him to give you yours. Uh, there are some 419 letters that come and say, Oh, say, you know, my mother died, my father died, and they left me a lot of money, but the account, I've got inheritance. If you can send me your account and then send me 500, you know, that to withdraw money. <laughs> what bank needs 500 to withdraw money that is already in the bank? <laughs> they will tell you there is money here. We're going to subtract the money from here if we have bank charges. Then you send it. Somebody will be playing 419 on you. No. <laughs> Philosophy. Oh, yeah. The study of wisdom that has nothing to do with God. Not the wisdom of God. When we're dealing with theosophy, theology, theo, God, Sophie, Sophia. And we're dealing Sophia from a spiritual perspective. There is theosophy that is worldly. Then there is theosophy that is Christian. And vain is it. After the tradition of men. After the tradition, you are dealing with tradition. For in Christ dwells all the fullness. Hallelujah. Now, now, if, if this is Christ, that means Christ is the container. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. They didn't get that. Yeah. Then Christ then becomes the container of God. They didn't get that now. So if Christ is the container of God, that means if we remove Christ, God can't stay. Now, when he is now the express image, the character of divinity, the express image, great is the mystery of godliness. That God became flesh. That God became flesh. Now, watch this. So, prophet, what do you mean when you say God did not live? In heaven, he lived in light. And knowing that I need to create human beings that are like me, that will approach me one day. <laughs> he needed to step out of it. Yeah. Oh. And be a man like us. Yeah. And approach us mm. rather than us approaching him. Yeah. Mm. No, 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 no. This is why the Bible calls it. The Bible, when we, when we spend time in the Word, do you know what we are consuming? Mm, come on. Do you even know what we are getting? Light. The Bible says the entrance of your Word. Give it light. Why? Because we need light in order to approach the light. You can get that. Now. So the consumption of the Word is the build-up of light. We are being changed. Hey. Hey. Like beholding in the mirror, we are being transformed. Into the same image. Why? He is light, dwells in a place called light. No man can approach unless they get the light. Yes. Yeah. Let me tell you a secret. Angels are not attracted to anything you think they are. To prayer, no. Say, so when, when I pray, angels, I feel angels around me. <laughs> Angels are attracted to light. The person with the word, not a mental ascent, huh? a spiritual word consumption. Faith is of the spirit, it's not of the mind. Most Christians have got faith in their minds. I believe, I believe. And you see, see, if you see someone going like, I believe, I believe, they don't believe. If you believe, you won't say that. I, I believe, I strongly believe in, I strongly, I'm strong in faith. 
You are trying to convince yourself. Listen, brothers and sisters. When you understand God, faith becomes unconscious. A woman touched the hem of Jesus' garment like this. Touched it. She was unconscious she was a woman. Because women were not allowed to be among men. She was unconscious she had an issue of blood. Because people with an issue of blood were not allowed to be there. The clothes of Jesus were unconscious. Touched. Even Jesus was unconscious of his own power going. Imagine he's moving like this. Then, ah, ah, he realizes there is a subtraction. <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. He said, there is somebody who touched me. Look at this. Look at this. Look at what people said. Said, Jesus, so many people are pressing against you. In other words, they are touching you. But there was a certain touch. Yeah, 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 yeah. There was a certain grabbing. Said, I felt power go out of me. I felt virtue. You, people touch you everywhere. You don't know power. You don't know nothing. Like, ah, why, why are you touching me? That's all. You Feeling. <laughs> The guy felt power go out. Power was out, coming out. Oozing out of him. He could, he could do the account. He said, I felt power go out. He knew the amount of power. And he would know what has been taken. <laughs> there is a kind of touching. And there is a kind of unconscious. Unconscious. Where you don't think it's happening. And it's happening. Where you don't have to think. I need money, Father. I need money now. In the name of Jesus. Money, 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 money. Money, please. Come, money. Hey. There are people who will be sitting like this. Just reading their word. Titi. Ah, Bengalet. They call it Bengalet in Nigeria. 15,000. Who is, who is this anonymous? Ah. Something is happening to you now in the name of Jesus. Unconscious. So how could God stay on his own for quadrillions of years? Remember, there are no years because eternity looks like a second. I spent three minutes in the presence of God and I came out with a whole book. And I knew I had not finished describing it. Some of the things, I, I even didn't even finish the whole thing. I started trying to tell my wife what I had seen. That one, I forgot it. Because God told me in that vision, what you see here, don't tell no one. So I never thought that no one, that anyone was including my wife. So I, I, I came out of that vision. I said, I want to sit down. I want to tell you. So I kept on saying, I want to tell you. I want to tell you. I want to tell you. And she was like, tell me. I said, I'll tell you. I'll tell you in a few minutes. I'll tell you. And it was just in me like this. Then I said, okay, now sit down. And I described the journey. You know, I needed to start from far. <laughs> from where I was getting. All this, remember, this is a three minutes, four minutes thing. Mm -hmm. I described years in there, trying to describe the whole thing that I, from place to place where I visited, uh, the, the warehouses in heaven, these places and, and places with body parts. And then I went to this warehouse where they were making instruments and angels were in, like, like form of uh, uh, in a, a conveyor belt. This one is passing, this one after it has been created, and the thing is formed there. Brilliant stuff that I said, what? Is this the way you make these things? I said, yes. It was like a, you see, when people think they will go to heaven to just be sitting around, you know, people have got a mindset that you just sit, <laughs> sitting on fluffy clouds. <laughs> going like, how great is our God? <laughs> Do you know in heaven we won't be praying? To who? Praying for what? Jesus said they won't need to pray. They don't need to fast. For I'm here. Jesus said it of his own disciples. He said, why do you need them to fast when they are with me? So prayer is because he's not here. <laughs> now when I say he's not here, I don't mean he's not in you. There are no requests. That's where requests are met there. They shall wipe with their tears. No crying. <laughs> I job my visa. Huh. I don't know if you're getting it. I don't know if they're getting this. Let me hear some. So, so wow. when I was about to get to the end, I saw everything, everything, and I was so shocked like it. 
<laughs> and we came out of that building thing. And I say thing because when you see it, <laughs> and I was told, whatever you saw in this one, you can tell everyone else, but the, the real thing that was made after that process, don't tell nobody. So I thought, I won't tell nobody. Tell my wife. I told you, listen, everything. When I said, you know what the thing was that they made there? I said, oh, you won't believe this. I can't even remember. <laughs> to this day, I don't have it. Oh. Wiped out completely. Wow. I've tried to retrace it like this. Nothing. Wow. One instruction I brought. Now just imagine three minutes. You have volumes to say in three minutes. Volumes. What do you think the spiritual world is like? You think you want to measure it with time? You can have one night, 20 minutes of a dream. And then you come back and you can only explain one minute of it. And you know you have not forgotten. You know there is a time where you forgot the whole dream. Then there's a time you sleep and you can come up with one dream only. And that one dream can only be explained in two minutes. That's right. You wonder, but I did one hour. That's right. And how come I only have this to tell? I was, you know, me, I tell people when I, when I, when I got sick and stuff like that way back, I, I got sick and the, I went through uh, that operation. Mm-hmm. And on the operating table, they, they say you, you count some five to one or some. I don't know. No, this one's saying you go down, I think. Oh, yeah, I was going down. I was going count down five, four, three. And I told my wife and, and told uh, my, my uh, brother-in-law there, I said, me, I will not be blanking this thing. Now, years ago, I said, I will not be blank. I can't just go blank, like blank. Like uh, it's blank. I don't know nothing. I, I come back and nothing to say. I said, no, I'm going I'm to talk to God. So I began to pray. Right? You know, God meets you at the point of your faith. Mm-hmm. I, the, I had done everything I knew how to do to stop that problem. I couldn't. It just attacked me in one go. And I couldn't understand. I did everything I could. I confessed. I prayed. I rebuked it. My faith was not there at that level. And I still had a kind of, the kind of money that can tell you, you can, you can call any doctor and fix it. <laughs> you, you understand? This is a kind of money that will move you away from faith, you know? <laughs> I'm telling you, there is a kind of option. You'll be like, there, there are so many people in church right now, even relatives, you know, something somebody said yesterday, uh, somebody who, who is a brilliant um, media company said something like this. He said, one thing I've realized, great men in life have great problems for relatives. I said, that's a good one. Great people <laughs> have relatives who cause great problems for them. I said, wait here. Uh, when I get in there, I'll come out. So I've done everything I could. So there's some money that can move you away. Because you have an option. Imagine when my relative thinks, this is the only man that will give me my money. That's a good thing. Because one person can be created to bring out the whole family out of trouble. Mm -hmm. And you might think, oh, I'll do it on my own. You won't. Mm -hmm. But then there is a problem where the relative can't even have faith Mm -hmm. for their own thing. Mm -hmm. So you become now the replacement of God. Mm -hmm. So they no longer believe for God to do anything. No, you will give me. Even their prayers, Father, make profit, give me a car. (laughs) <laughs> so, so, now, so, I thought, look, we can pay. The other thing it was, I don't know how much it was, thousands to have the operation. The operation took how many minutes? Maybe five minutes, but then to bring me back was another few minutes. Mm, I don't know. No. So, I mean, the, maybe what? About 10 minutes, roughly. To bring me back. Now. Just imagine, maybe you're 15 minutes there, five minutes they've already done it, then they close up everything. And they just put another one here, another thing there, and, and some small, you know, machines in there, and remove this and cut this, and boom. 
And the moment I said five, four, three, boom. All I could see was darkness. And then I could hear there is no more count from me. And I realized, I'm, you know, look, I think that, that thing is about to go. Maybe I, on three, that's when I realized something is about to go off. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm going out now. Boom. And I kid you not. I came out of the, when they say, when they brought me up and say, hey, hey. And the first words that came out of my mouth, came out of my mother, I saw God. And I didn't even know whether they had finished, whether... I, I, in fact, I said, are they, when are they starting to operate? Mm. said, no, it's done. Because there was no difference for me. Wow. Light appeared in front of me in a human form, like human wow. kind of shape, yeah. rather. And light. And you know what, light? I am God. Wow. That's all. Wow. No discussion. All the five minutes of operation, wow. ten minutes of being... To, to bring me back and to just kind of make sure everything is okay and, and me coming back. I had three words. There was no other thing that I can explain, though all, all the minutes were filled with three words. I am God. Full stop. Now just imagine the time and the time, the thing that was said and how it filled the whole, all the minutes. The spiritual realm doesn't have time. When God is in there, he, he can be a jelly, like, you know, a, they say a, a goldfish has got a memory of three seconds. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> if you say, whoop, whoosh, three minutes, come back to you, like, uh, <laughs> look at all the fish. Have you ever seen fish? But that's the stupid side of 